Big Idea 4 is all about covalent compounds, so in this lesson we're just going to talk about what covalent compounds are and the two different types of covalent compounds, polar covalent and nonpolar covalent. So covalent compounds share electrons. So that is the big difference between covalent compounds and ionic compounds. Ionic compounds involve the transfer of electrons. The metal loses the electron, the non-metal gains it. Covalent compounds are going to be a group of elements that share electrons. Covalent compounds are going to be formed between groups of non-metals. So that is another big difference between ionic and covalent. Ionic compounds are formed between one metal and one non-metal. Covalent compounds are going to be formed between groups of metals. That prefix co means shared. Like if you're a co-captain, you share those responsibilities with someone else. And valent is for valence electrons. So when we say covalent, we literally mean shared valence electrons. Covalent compounds share valence electrons. Well, why do they share electrons? because they still follow the octet rule. So atoms share valence electrons to complete their octet. So remember, prefix oct meaning eight. The octet rule is that atoms want eight valence electrons. So quick refresher of the octet rule. All atoms want eight valence electrons. But hydrogen is going to be an exception. Remember, hydrogen is happy with only two electrons. Hydrogen only has an s orbital, and we're going to fill that one s orbital with its two electrons, so its outermost energy level is still full. Well, how does sharing valence electrons allow atoms to complete their octet? Let's look at something like diatomic chlorine, CO2. So chlorine is in group 7. So that means that chlorine has 7 valence electrons. It's going to find another chlorine to bond with that also has 7 valence electrons. We never want to touch the pairs. But what happens if we have unpaired electrons is those electrons can be shared to form a bond. So now, by sharing those electrons, each chlorine has completed its octet. If I look at this chlorine, it has two, four, six, seven, eight electrons. Seven of its own plus the one that it shared. Same thing with this chlorine it now completed its octet. It has seven of its own valence electron plus the one that it shared. So by sharing that pair of electrons, chlorine completes its octet. Let's just look at one more. Let's look at the bond that forms between hydrogen and chlorine. Hydrogen is in group one. It has one valence electron. We already talked about chlorine. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. 
So again, if we have unpaired electrons, they can be shared and they can form a bond. So we said hydrogen wants two valence electrons. It is happy. It has one of its own plus the one that it shared from chlorine. Chlorine has seven of its own valence electrons plus the one that it shared from hydrogen. So it has eight. So by sharing these valence electrons, these groups of nonmetals can complete their octet, which makes them stable. So there are two different types of covalent compounds. First, let's talk about polar covalent. In a polar covalent compound, electrons are not shared equally. So the difference between our covalent compounds comes down to how do they share the electrons. Polar covalent, the electrons are not shared equally. This is due to a large difference in electronegativity. So let's define electronegativity. Electronegativity is the tendency to attract electrons. The more electronegative an element is, the stronger its attraction is for electrons. So let's look at an example. A polar molecule uh, something like water, H2O. Water is polar. We're going to talk about Lewis structures coming up. So I'm just going to draw you what water would look like. So what happens? Why is water polar? So oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. And electronegativity is a tendency to attract electrons. So if oxygen is more electronegative, it pulls the shared electrons closer. Think of this like tug-of-war. Hydrogen and oxygen are sharing these electrons, but oxygen has a greater pull on those electrons. Imagine you're playing tug-of-war. Well, the person that is stronger is going to pull that rope closer to them. Oxygen is like the stronger person in tug-of-war. It has a greater tendency to attract those shared electrons. So what's going to happen is those shared electrons are going to get pulled towards oxygen. Well, ox uh, electrons are negative. If those electrons are closer to oxygen, oxygen is going to get what we call a partial negative. If oxygen pulls those shared electrons closer to it, that means the shared electrons get pulled away from hydrogen. Well, if electrons are negative and they're getting pulled away from hydrogen, hydrogen is going to get what we call the partial positive. Let's talk about why we use this symbol partial. 
it's not a full negative and a full positive like a cation and anion. It's not like hydrogen is losing the electron and oxygen is gaining it and I'm forming positive and negative ions. The electrons are still shared. It's not a transfer of electrons. The electrons just get pulled closer to oxygen, so we say that it is a partial negative. It is creating a negative pull. Those electrons are being pulled away from hydrogen, so hydrogen gets the uh, partial positive. We have a positive pull. So the reason we call these polar compounds is because we are creating poles. We have a positive pole and a negative pole. So we can have polar covalent compounds in which the electrons are not shared equally. We can also have a nonpolar covalent compound In a nonpolar covalent compound, the electrons are shared equally. The electrons are shared equally due to a similar electronegativity value. So we have looked at water. Water was polar. An example of a nonpolar compound would be diatomic bromine. This is going to be nonpolar. So let's go back to that tug of war example. Imagine you are playing tug of war with someone and you guys are pulling on that tug of war rope with the same strength. If you're equally pulling on that rope, is that rope going to be swayed to one side or the other? Probably not. If you're pulling with the exact same force, the exact same strength, it's going to stay kind of right there in the middle. Well, same thing with diatomic bromine. Since they're the same element, they're going to have the same electronegativity. That means they are pulling on those shared electrons with an equal magnitude. Well, if each bromine is pulling with the same magnitude, those electrons aren't going to be swayed one way or another. It is going to be shared equally between the two. Since those electrons are shared equally between the two atoms, not, I will not have like a negative pole and a positive pole, which is why we call this nonpolar. We do not have any poles because the electrons are shared equally between the atoms.